thank you everyone for, for joining today. Um, my name is Esteban Soto. I'm CEO of Americas for Alton Technologies. And, and as mentioned before, I'm, I'm joined by my colleague Shabana Ahmadzai, who is Director of Services, and our client uh, Todd Harder. Um, who is the lead food technologist for the Morningstar company. With this presentation, first, the, the main idea would be to present you uh, a case study um, of our software-guided power ultrasound in order to improve product quality and prevent heat treatment equipment fouling. Specifically, in this case, would be with steam injectors. Um, in the beginning, we'll go first through each company, just explaining uh, what we are doing, um, and then also Morningstar's take on innovation how they are taking new technologies into practice in their plants. Um, after that, I'll explain more about what our technology is so that you have a better idea of understanding um, each part of it and uh, in, in relation to the case study. So uh, better, it, it gives you a better image of, of what we are doing. Um, and then after that, we'll, we'll go through the case study. When it comes to Alton, we're a Finnish company. Um, we have been founded back in 2016 out of the need of companies to, uh, or industrial facilities to get rid of fouling issues without stopping production. So uh, what we are doing is that we are the only company to use software guided power ultrasound to remove fouling from industrial equipment uh, without the need of stopping uh, production or using toxic chemicals. Later on, you'll see what, what we mean more about this. Um, we have done more than 50 projects uh, worldwide from uh, South Africa, Japan, European countries, um, now North America and South America. I'm actually based here in the US uh, in our office uh, and our headquarters are in Helsinki, Finland. Uh, we have about 20 employees and we speak nine languages in order to, to support uh, the needs of our clients around the world. The reason why we're here is because we have been working with uh, Morningstar already for the last couple of years. Um, they are the biggest ingredient tomato processor in the world and with that comes several issues uh, when it comes to not only fouling but also product quality due to um, uh, burn on or, or different kind of dirt in, in, their, in their process. So this is why we uh started partnering up with them um unfortunately i believe todd is having some issues to connect uh, so we can we can move forward and um, i'll let him uh, present their company and their taking innovation as soon as he can join going through what we do um First of all, just explain a little bit of what is fouling. I, I'm sure that uh, many of you already know that this is a global issue. It, it's basically dirt or, or different kind of um, organic uh, deposits or scaling that, that um, can appear in, in different processes, in, in pipelines, heat exchangers, valves, you name it. Um, and, and the big issue here is that there is, uh, the need of a stopping production to clean them. It decreases process efficiency uh, because a dirty equipment can't be as efficient as a, as a new one or a clean one. Um, then you need to clean it. You can you will then use different chemicals to do it. And uh, if you don't treat it correctly, it will cause also uh, product quality issues. The cost of production loss due to industrial fouling um, in heat exchangers alone is about $200 billion of the annual GDP in the top 10 economies. So if you add um, even more equipment like, like heat exchangers, valves, uh, pipelines, valves, they, then you will get a lot of, um, of, of losses there. And this is what we are aiming to solve. We created um, this technology, which is externally applied uh, ultrasonic transducers with a clamp-on device so that um, we can, through ultrasound, we can penetrate the structure of the equipment, of the target equipment, and clean the inside. Um, it is really easy to install. Uh, we can clean the, the uh, equipment without stopping the process uh, or also prevent fouling from happening. And we do this with um, data-driven software, so all remotely. Uh, no need to, to be adjusting the software there on site. 
we can divide the technology in three. So in, in this case, um, the main part is the software. So it's the brain of our technology. Without it, it's not possible to control high power ultrasound uh, to the level that we do. Um, we can predefine different uh, parameters uh, with the parameters of the process from our clients so that this is ready to go as soon as our system is installed. The user don't need to interact with the solution or, or in this case with the software. Um, so um, we are taking care of everything remotely. Uh, then we have the central unit, which basically translates electricity to ultrasonic power. Um, it is made robust so that it can easily uh, go through the wear and tear of a normal industrial facility. Um, and then we have the transducers with the mechanical attachments, which is um, what makes it also very special, which is because it's really easy to install. Um, you don't need to have a special degree to do it. Anyone, really anyone can, can install the, the device. Uh, on, on the equipment. When it comes to applicability, um, as I mentioned, the ultrasound control happens through software. It allows us to focus exactly the power where we want, uh, which is very important in different kind of scenarios, like in uh, heat exchangers or, or, um, or, or heat treatment uh, processes. Uh, it is applicable to fluids and liquid carrying equipment uh, made of steel or their alloys and fiberglass. And also it's, as I mentioned, really easy to install. It's one of the key aspects that we looked at when we were designing our solution, that we wanted this to be as easy as out of the box, ready-made solution so that you can just clamp it on your device and that's it. No need to do any modifications to your equipment while production is running. You just install our system and that's it. Um, is Todd here? Yes. Good morning. A good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank everybody for joining us too, and thank, thank everybody for uh, having a career in, in food production and beverage processing, for making wholesome, safe foods. Uh, thank you all for that. Even those that uh, are making safe, uh, good, uh, happy foods and beverages that aren't as nutritious but as, are safe too. So, um, Morning Star. Um, uh, is a uh, is it was was founded in 1990 by Chris Rufer and uh, he had uh, founded this company uh, based off of two principles uh, which allowed us to grow to where we are and those two principles are no one has power or coercion over anyone else and people must keep their commitments to each other and that's what we do in our R&D group and to this organization and uh, this organization is, is what we call self-managed. And uh, in 2011, uh, we were uh, written about by the Harvest Vids Business Unit as the most uh, up-and-coming management group in the world. So uh, if you guys are interested, you can go see us on our webpage at MorningStarCo.com. But getting to that, that le leads us to why we're so in innovative and, and choosing people like Altum to do work with and be partnership with. And currently, we have three of the largest uh, tomato facilities. If you can see on the on the on the on the side there, that one in Los Banos, California, it was built in 1990, and that does over 99 uh, metric tons uh, annually per uh, per hour, and we have a cap capacity of 605 there. And uh, the other one in Williams is 1.2 1, 1, 1,225 metric tons per hour very large, one of the world's largest tomato facility, and then the one here in uh, San Anella, uh, which is also the, uh, the second largest. And now you can see why it's so important that why we keep our food safe and uh, free of material like uh, burnt products. So uh, if you go to the next slide, please, Esteban. The one the one with uh, the approach to innovation. So using the self-management, we selected uh, our research and we found uh, Ultima on, on, on a non-food journal, which was in the paper uh, and waste uh, industry. And we asked them if they ever done food. And they said they've done one food plant before and will be the second one and the first one in the United States. And the project was uh, very successful. And some of the other uh, process, stuff that we've come up 
uh, has been uh, sweet paste, uh, flavor infusion, and uh, recently been we're working on a, a new technology uh, to for rapid de de detection of spoilage using non-growth methods. So as you see, we're we're very innovative, and we're glad to have Altima as a partner in our innovations and uh, look forward to a future. Thank you, thank you, Todd. Uh, it's been great to work with you guys as well. So it's uh, we're really happy to be able to present this case also to the audience here. Um, to continue with with the Altum solution, so that you can see how it how it actually works in practice. I have this short video of just a, an example of a dirty pipe. Um, you basically clamp on the device. We start the sonication and we start cleaning from the inside. This is a real-time video uh, from a 500 millimeter metal pipe uh, with lime scale fouling. And you can see how the chunks start to fall off and uh, it, it's getting pulverized. Um, and yeah, this is under one minute with, with such type of, of lime scale. From here, I would like to introduce um, my colleague Shabana. Um, she has been working with Morningstar from the beginning and has experience in different type of, of fouling. Um, in, the, in this case, we'll be discussing more about the organic fouling that is happening at, uh, with the steam injectors, but uh, so that you have an idea also how how many different types of fouling can ultrasound take care of. So we're always looking for different cases. And, and uh, if you have some some that you would like us to have a look at, just feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to analyze them. Um, yes, yeah, so please, Shabana, uh, I'll leave you the stage. Hi, everybody. Um, so basically, uh, as Todd earlier pointed out, um, uh, they got in touch with us in 2018, asked us if we are able to uh, look at their process. Are we able to, in any way, our shape, or form, assist in um, preventing uh, burnt on in the uh, at the end product? Should that there be a possibility for that? Well, we got literally got together. We went through their equipment. We went through their process, and we chose. Uh, the steam injectors as a um, place to do uh, a, a pilot because as Todd earlier mentioned, we had only worked with one other food company and their product was different. So it, uh, whenever there is a new product, if we don't have any experience with them either in the lab or with our customers uh, and our customers are slightly unsure of how do we really work then we have this approach where we say that okay we do it the way we do it so that we show it to you guys we prove that it works and then we go from there so roughly the way it went was that um when we picked the steam injector we picked it that and because of the fact that um during the sterilization process, the tomato paste would get attached to the inner walls of the steam injector and to the steam nozzles, which would over time uh, burn due to the high temperature. And it would either uh, not it would not only um, con um, cause um, fouling on the inner surface of the equipment, but it will also potentially contaminate the end product with burn particles. And therefore, uh, so we went ahead, we decided that, okay, there is this six meter long pipe or steam injector. We're going to do the pilot project on this. And we are gonna try to show that there is no need to do a CIP, which was normally done every uh, seven to nine days uh, that we could potentially get rid of CIP completely. Um, so the, uh, Mechanic, so the type of uh, mechanism behind fouling cleaning that we use uh, in most cases is uh, cavitation. Uh, and cavitation basically uh, occurs that when you uh, introduce sound into a liquid and you create vibrations in there, are, you form bubbles and over time the bubble expands. And eventually when the, it reaches its threshold, the bubble, collapses and it implodes and it releases energy that basically uh, in layman's terms scripts of uh, the fouling that is on the um, inner surfaces of the equipment and these um, 
cavitations, they are very hard to produce normally. Uh, not, not, excuse me, not produce, but control normally. And that's where basically Altum's software comes in. Uh, and with our um, software, uh, we are able to uh, control the power levels and to create uh, um, or to focus the ultrasound energy uh, uh, so that the energy that um, radiates from the uh, equipment into the liquid, uh, that also, uh, in a, like under the thresh uh, cavitation threshold, so that basically removes the fouling off of, or again, in layman's term, pushes off the fouling off of the inner walls of the equipment and um, then product flow, uh, like liquid, liquid flow inside the equipment basically takes the uh, product with it along further down the line. Uh, when it so comes that's to the morning stars more about prevention, right? So that there's a... Yes, so yeah. um, we're getting to it. <laughs> so can you go to the next slide? So yeah. with morning star, um, that's the mechanism of cleaning. But with morning, uh, oh wow, we're going to talk about. Mm, so with morning star, it is prevention, and we're going to get to that in one minute. But basically, the idea is that our system, as Esteban said earlier, it's fairly modular, it's fairly simple to attach. And in the case of morning star, we use one of our two uh, mechanics, which is uh, the one on the left. Uh, which is designed for smaller pipes. It's very easy to attach. It's basically roughly two pieces of metal that have been designed specifically for that case, put together, bolted from both sides. Uh, but we also have another uh, mechanical attachment that is um, more modular, more adaptable in size and dimension. And those have been used for cases where the diameter of the vessel, it doesn't have to be always a pipe, has been larger. And the largest vessel we have worked with was roughly like 16 meters in diameter. So uh, equipment size is not has not been an issue for us, whether it's with Morningstar or in other cases. Um, so yeah, with Morningstar, as I said, uh, uh, we used the clamps uh, the, the, for small pipe. You can see it here in the images. Uh, they were basically clamped around the uh, steam injector uh, and the location of the clamps were uh, decided uh, so that we wanted the maximum amount of impact uh, with the minimum amount of uh, transducers or po uh, input power. Uh, and um, we wanted to make sure that uh, the effect that it has, it is both uh, in both directions to, because it, the clamps were placed in the middle, uh, like roughly in the middle of the pipe. Um, and because we had agreed with um, Morningstar that they don't want cleaning because the cleaning is usually done at the end of a cycle, so a CIP cleaning, but rather they wanted prevention so that we get rid of the CIP cleaning that's needed during the production. Uh, so um, we adjusted everything that was necessary on the software side, we turned it on and we let it stay. Because 2019 was more of a pilot project uh, session, we went uh, together with Morningstar, we selected different lengths or segments of time uh, to see that, okay, the first is the standard seven to nine days, or like, okay, it was able to keep it clean for seven to nine days. What if we can double the time? And then we tried to do triple the time. And last but not least, the last segment of the production was 34 days we were able to keep um, the entire steam injector clean for that 34 days in 2019. Because the results were so great in 2019, Morningstar <laughs> thought specifically uh, with his team, uh, they uh, were convinced and they decided that why not in 2020 get rid of the need for CIP completely. So this year during the, we were able to keep, keep the steam injector, as you can see on the right side image, clean after uh, during the entire production season, uh, which was roughly 85 days. And uh, there wasn't any need for any form of stoppaging, stoppage, whether it's due to needs for CIP or any other issue. And there was, there was no burned uh, particles found in the end product. Uh, basically, uh, as a conclusion to 
the prevention case in the steam injectors, what I can say is that uh, process conditions, they varied uh, across industries, across the uh, same industry, and even on the same side with the same customer. Uh, but that's why we have built our system with uh, um, uh, different all of these aspects in mind we utilize AI we uh, use real-time IOT technology and uh, cloud-based computing to do remote monitoring so that for example uh, when uh, our time uh, like our customers tell us that okay now I see indication of potentially the steam injector nozzles accumulating tomato paste around it that uh, it's so that we prevent the um, burning from happening then we can increase or decrease or adjust our parameters or power levels and all that stuff so basically our entire system uh well i guess is modular it is very um, yeah it's very i think user friendly and very um adjustable for adjustable thank you um, when it comes to different other applications, um, how, how do you see uh, how do you see it, Shabana? Not just for bar burned food residues, but um, other cases, right? Uh, the easiest thing would be to say that we are not industry or scaling or fouling type dependent. We can work with almost anything. Well, but if we specific uh, stick to food safety and the food industry, uh, we have not only been able to um, assist with removal of burnt uh, food residues in both sterilization and pasteurization, we have been able to prevent uh, scaling, uh, formation of fat, or if there has been blockages uh, in where CIP is not able to uh, reach, we have been able to help in th that. We have been able to remove as well as prevent formation of biofilm. We have done CIP optimization. Uh, we have, uh, our system has been used in uh, treatment of food sludges and increased sink of dry material, both in the food industry as well as of the, mm, in other industries and basically in general uh, the good thing about ultrasound is that it's able to help uh, and work with a lot of different processes so if there is a, chem a chemical reaction or a homogenization or something that you want to um, push and increase or make it more efficient ultrasound is usually used for that stuff and because our system is so diverse we have been able to help our customers with that aspect too. So if there is even a little bit of a question that whether our system is able to help you in your process, whether it's cleaning prevention or um, uh, chemical process optimization, I don't think, I think the best way is to just get in touch with us and ask us that, hey, is it possible? Because, well, the sky's the limit. Thank you. And yeah, to add to that, um... You have here also our contact details, uh, Shabana, mine, and, and Todd's. So in case you would like to get in touch with us for, for anything you would like to discuss, just feel free to reach out. Uh, this presentation will be also shared with you uh, through through the organizer so, um, so that you can also share this with colleagues or anyone who you think would be interested in the topic. Yes, and we are in the expo section, so if you guys want to pop by over there, check stuff out. If you have any questions, you get to see some of the stuff there and feel free to get in touch with us and ask us anything. So uh, we have a few minutes for a Q&A. Yes, uh, thank you for your nice presentation. Of course, very interesting. And uh, yes, yeah, so it's an international uh, presentation, what you are doing in mm -hmm. different places of this world. So yeah, if anybody has some questions, please uh, let us know. Of course, I will share it with you. I have a question here. So uh, yeah. Alexander says, what is the regulatory status of this technology? Is it something that needs to be authorized locally before being used in a new country? Um, to be honest, no, unless uh, you are dealing with pharmaceutical industry in the US, then you would need to be FDA approved, but otherwise, no. Um, it, the barrier entry barrier levels for our technology it's it's super low. Um, mm -hmm. We don't need any special permit for that. Um, for other industries, then uh, it depends. But uh, yeah, 
usually there is no regulatory status uh, that we need to take care of. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to thank also Todd it's, that uh, uh, he took the time to to join us. Uh, thank you so much. You, you've been a, a great partner as well. And I would like to add that, by the way, Todd is here completely and utterly out of his own free accord. He's um, he's being such a uh, he's been such an amazing. Uh, I guess I consider him as a coworker in a sense that he is. He's been helping us a lot. He, he's been very open, and he's been he's been doing this all of his free will. There is no like financial inter transaction or anything between us in that regard. That he's just here for the love of technology and for the uh, sake of sharing knowledge.